Rapper Deshaun Holton, better known as Proof, one of the founders of the rap group D12 and a close friend of sometime D12 member Eminem, was shot and killed in Detroit nightclub when he was 32 years old. Police say Proof was shot in the head after an altercation at the Triple C Club. He was rushed to St. John Holy Cross Hospital, but was pronounced dead on arrival. And uh, just saw him laying there like that. You know, it was just, uh, everybody was just up. How did, how did M take it when, when Proof went away? We all took it hard, man, but, uh, you know, Marshall, that was his best friend, you know, and Proof grew up together, man, you know what I'm saying? Stayed next door to each other, so, you know, we all took it pretty hard, man, but, uh, you know what I'm saying, I think he probably took it harder than anybody, because, you know what I'm saying, they, they were literally best friends, so. April 10th, 2006. Deshaun Dupree Holton, known as the Detroit hip-hop legend Proof and founder of the iconic rap collective D12, was out for a night of fun as he was accustomed to. Old habits die hard and Proof had the most respect for the city that raised him. His patriotism was bar none and that resulted in him staying close to the neighborhood even if he was now a star and could have moved to a safer location and distanced himself from dangerous company and environment. Instead, he chose to remain in the heart of the city he loved, an honorable choice, but costly one. That night would be the last time Proof would enjoy a night out in the city. Numerous accounts reshaped the moments before his passing, but one key detail was the place it occurred. At the CCC Club, along Detroit's Eight Mile Road. Before Proof's arrival to the place where the tragedy would occur, his night had already long began, along with two friends that accompanied him, club hopping, having a good time. As the night commenced, his close friend, Reginald Moore, AKA Mud, messaged the rapper to find out about the spot where they would hang out that night. Proof would reply, stating he's at the Gentleman's Club, Coliseum, with two other friends at the time by the names of Mac and Chop. Mud would join the trio and the four of them would hang out at what he referred to as the titty bar before drinking, having a conversation with the DJ and then making their way to the Coliseum to another club named Rolex. There, they continued having a fun time, enticing their eyes and consuming more alcohol into their system. The night was young and they decided why stop now. That brought them to Proust's final destination, the CCC Club, which by this time was after midnight entering Tuesday, April 11, 2006. There, the festivities continued leading up to the gruesome moments that would take Proust's life. First, reports state that around 4.30 a.m., things got heated between Proof and a patron by the name of Keith Bender. Bender was a veteran of the first Gulf War. The former medic was forced out of the army due to a heart condition. Ironically, the reason stated in the reports that he was at the CCC bar was to celebrate good news about his condition. Allegedly, the reason Proof and Bender got into their altercation was over a game of pool. Reports state that the argument escalated, leading to Proof allegedly knocking Bender to the ground, after which, he proceeded to draw a firearm and shoot Bender twice, one bullet hitting him in the head. Reports further state, this is when Proof stood over a bleeding Bender, and then when a friend of Bender's returned fire, delivering the wounds that would end Proof's life. They both would be in life-threatening condition and were transported to the hospital. Proof was rushed to St. John's Holy Cross Hospital, while Bender was taken to St. John Hospital, where he was listed as being in critical condition. Proof, unfortunately, was pronounced deceased on arrival. Keith Bender would ultimately suffer the same fate at the hospital just eight days later, as his wounds were too fatal for his body to heal and recover. Further investigations would reveal that his friend, who was the main suspect in brandishing his firearm and shooting Proof once in the head and twice in the chest, was in fact his cousin and the bouncer at the club. He was Mario Etheridge, with his name in the spotlight as the one who pulled the trigger ending Proof's life, 
Ethridge turned himself into the police the day after the incident. By the second day, Wayne County prosecutor Kim Worthy charged Etheridge with carrying a concealed weapon and discharge of a firearm in a dwelling or occupied structure. That would lead to an uproar over the charges when friends and family of proof noticed one charge excluded from the list, murder. Kim Worthy, however, reiterated that even if Etheridge was not charged with proof's hit, the investigation in the case is far from over, hinting that the charge could still be on the table. Etheridge pleaded not guilty to the charges and posted $7,000 bond and was released from the Wayne County Jail. The CCC club would be forced to close its doors for a period of time due to being at fault for the altercation as clubs were required to close at 2 a.m. But police and local residents say they generally opened from 2 to 7 a.m. after other clubs closed in accordance with local law. Given the incident happened hours after 2 a.m., coupled with the addition of 18 police reports being filed about the club during the past decade, covering shootings and other violations, Proof's incident was the final straw. Detroit and the hip-hop community, on a whole, was about to be shaken up in mourning. And when the news outlets aired the tragedy passing of the Detroit legend, that was exactly the case. Rapper Deshaun Holton, better known as Proof, one of the founders of the rap group D12 and a close friend of sometime D12 member Eminem, was shot and killed at Detroit nightclub. He was 32 years old. Police say Proof was shot in the head after an altercation at the Triple C Club. He was rushed to St. John Holy Cross Hospital, but was pronounced on arrival. His group D12 took his passing to the heart, but the one who felt the full force of his demise was his best friend turned brother and next door neighbor Marshall Mathers, a.k.a. Eminem. How did, how did M take it when, when Proof went away? We all took it hard, man, but, uh, you know, Marshall, that was his best friend, you know, him and Proof grew up together, man, you know what I'm saying? Stayed next door to each other, so, you know, we all took it pretty hard, man, but, uh, you know what I'm saying, I think he probably took it harder than anybody because, you know what I'm saying, they, they were literally best friends, so. The two go back to childhood days when Eminem first met him outside of school on the steps while he was giving out flyers. Proof didn't see Eminem's skin color. All he saw was a kid that loved hip hop just as much as him. And from there, the bond only grew. In fact, Proof was the one who opened the doors for Eminem's talent to be seen rather than him being a white kid wanting to rap. In that era of hip hop, the culture belonged to black artists as they were the ones who inspired the genre and had the talent and wordplay. Proof, realizing Eminem was the real deal and loved the craft and had the talent, would trick people at school into listening to Eminem rap, knowing very well that once they heard with their ears and not see with their eyes, they would become a believer just like him. And sure enough, Eminem's talent broke the stigma and caught their attention. Listen, we, I tell you this. Those people. We, I went to a all-black uh, dominant high school, and we used to. I used to sneak them in there into the lunchroom, right? And I asked to be like, they should be like, we want to battle you, Proof. I used to be like, nah, <laughs> can't battle me. Why don't you battle the white boy over there first? And everybody would be like, we used to sit in there. We used to sit in there and beat on tables and ah, him. Man, he he do the bust a little rhyme, then Emma come out and him the whole lunchroom, which is all a black dominant school would be looking like that. The 8 Mile movie Eminem would later release about his life would show the character Future, played by Mackay Pfeiffer, who was inspired by who Proof was to Eminem. From the moment Proof and Eminem became friends, the path to them becoming rap legends was history. The two became more like brothers. Where there was Proof, there was Eminem. Where there was Eminem, there was Proof. Proof became his right-hand man at every Eminem concert. They were the dream team. And being that they came up from nothing as kids in school to now touring the world, it was the future every friendship dream of living. Just January of 2006, Proof was the best man at Eminem's wedding. Proof often shared the stage with Eminem. He was even the best man at Eminem's wedding this past January. So when Proof lost his life, it was like a part of Eminem went with him because he spiraled into darkness and illegal substance abuse then nearly claimed his life. He placed the guilt on himself, 
questioning. If he was only there, he could have changed something. And the guilt only got worse as he recalled releasing the music video for his song, Like Toy Soldiers, off his 2004 album Encore. The video and song would hit the hip-hop community, and in bringing the concept to life, he used proof in clips showing him shot and Eminem sitting in the hospital waiting room as doctors try to revive him. With proof gone, his group D12 crumbled. He was like the glue and energy keeping everyone together. Eminem would release the song Stepping Stone on his 2018 Kamikaze album, with the heartfelt track speaking on the end of the group without proof. It was the end of an era. That's how much respected and cherished proof was. Without him, nothing felt the same. The city of Detroit experienced a lot of retaliation when proof passed, resulting in many losing their lives. You know, I mean, was there was there a certain degree of like retaliation, like, well, a feeling of it well, like, when that happened? A lot did happen after that. Like a lot of people end up getting killed. A lot of really? Stuff. Yeah, a lot of a lot of shit was going on after that. You know what I'm saying? With all the pain and grief going on there were still numerous theories and speculations going on about what actually happened the night Proof died. During the trial in September 2018, the prosecutor states that Etheridge fired the first shot, which was a warning shot. The assistant prosecutor, Elizabeth Walker, also reiterated that when Etheridge fired the warning shot, that was the first display, the first use, the first time anyone knew about a weapon. It was at that point, according to the prosecution, that Proof drew his weapon and fired at Keith Bender, who was Etheridge's cousin. This contradicted the previous reports believed to be true, that Proof was the one who fired first. Further, on October 2, 2006, a double XL interview by an eyewitness and friend of Proof, Reginald Moore, aka Mudd, broke his silence on what allegedly happened that night. According to him, when they got to the CCC club, he was the only one with a pistol on him out of the group of four that included proof. The night went on and they were getting ready to leave, walked out the door, but saw two girls from their prior time at Club Rolex. While he was interacting with one of the women, he noticed proof and Bender in a verbal conflict and things started to get loud. Mud could hear Bender shout to proof, I don't care who the F you are. At that moment, he proceeded to them and recalled telling Bender the final words, calm down, it ain't that serious. Proof proceeded to speak to LA, the owner of the club, and according to Mud, that's when Bender snuck around and punched Proof in the face. At that point, everyone cleared the room for them to fight it out as men, but that's when Mud allegedly heard Etheridge fire shots into the air to break up the fight. This prompted Proof to end up in a squabble with Mud for his gun in order to return fire. To return fire into the air as well as a perceived response to Etheridge. Once Proof got the upper hand of Mud obtaining the gun and fired it into the air, Bender attacks Proof and the two begin fighting. That's when Etheridge allegedly starts firing in their direction, hitting both Proof and his own cousin, inflicting the wounds that ended them both. Mario Etheridge's case would end with Wayne County Circuit Judge Vera Massey Jones sentencing him to time served for the concealed weapon charge and levied a $2,000 fine for firing a gun in a building. Prosecutors used the first narrative reported that Proof fired first, determining Etheridge acted lawfully in defense of Bender when he fired at Proof, but they say Etheridge shot twice at the ceiling in an effort to stop Proof before aiming the gun at him. Those shots were the basis for the charge of illegally firing a weapon. Proof had offered so much to his city and to hip hop and was on the verge of lifting both up so much more. The city and the hip hop artist made sure to come out to his funeral and show just how much he was loved and cherished. His tragic passing left a hole that will forever feel unfilled. He leaves behind friends, fans, a wife, and five kids, but his legacy will forever be engraved in Detroit and the music industry through his projects like I Miss the Hip Hop Shop, Searching for Jerry Garcia, and Time Tell, which was written and recorded in only 24 hours. 
Rest in peace, proof.